So welcome back after uh, our summer break to the Renford Expert Webinar Series. Good evening in Egypt and other Arab countries. And also welcome all participants from other international countries. My name is Manfred Tauber and I am Head of Global Education at Renford. Today, and this is my pleasure, I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Amre El Etrebi from Cairo, Egypt. He attended the Faculty of Oral and Dental Medicine at Cairo University in Egypt, where he graduated in 1996. He received his master degree in restorative dentistry in 2005 and his doctorate degree in fixed prosthodontics in 2010, where he also is now an associate professor of fixed prosthodontics from the Faculty of Dentistry Ain Shams University in Cairo. Professor El Trebi, he is also a founder and owner of the Trebi Training Center for Fixed Prosthodontics Technology in Egypt. He maintains a private practice limited to fixed prosthodontics and aesthetic dentistry, in which he does his own ceramics. He, he has contributed several publications as well as presented numerous of lectures, hands-on and post-graduated courses on ceramic and aesthetic on national and international levels. With this webinar, uh, Professor El Trevi present replication of color shapes on monolithic lithium disilicate restorations because like the triple R protocol. So now I look forward to an exciting presentation and hand over to you, Amre. Thank you very much, Manfred. And thank you very much, Manfred, for this uh, marvelous uh, introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening in Egypt and in Germany. I think we are on the same uh, time uh, line. So good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to uh, share my screen first to start my presentation and uh, here it is. Uh, as Manfred introduced me, I'm uh, Amrel Trevi. I'm an associate professor of fixed prosthodontics at Ain Shams University. I come from Egypt. Uh, uh, I live in, Cairo, in Giza, and uh, my university, Ain Shams University, is in Cairo. Uh, at the faculty of Ain Shams University, we do I, I do uh, direct the dental occlusion, uh, postgraduate and undergraduate programs, as well as dental technology for postgraduate programs. I also lecture for postgraduate and undergraduate, do demonstrations in the clinic and as well as in the lab. Uh, I do have my training center where I have several programs, mainly for uh, dentists and prosthodontists uh, who are uh, willing to increase the skills and uh, have some enthusiasm about uh, CAD CAM restorations, ceramics, and uh, dental laboratory fixed prosthodontic work. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had the pleasure to join uh, Manfred and uh, Renfred family, uh, where I was uh, recognized by them as a key opinion leader for Renfred and one of their uh, experts. Uh, it is an honor and pleasure. And um, Manfred, uh, he's the only one I met till now. He's a little bit taller than me, and this is... <laughs> My students were very pleased to see somebody taller than me, even if it, he lives outside of Egypt. So uh, uh, it was a pleasure, Manfred, and always uh, meeting you. I thank Renfred and the uh, Renfred family for uh, inviting me for this uh, webinar, and I hope everybody would enjoy it. Uh, today, mostly, uh, in e especially in Egypt, Many dentists have a CAD CAM restorations as well as heat pressed uh, restorations coming from either their uh, lab or from their dental office. 
CAT CAM restorations being widely spread, especially in Egypt, in centers, big centers, even in, in uh, private uh, clinics. Uh, at that point, many dentists found that uh, de being deprived of the laboratory support and being, um, he's the dentist and the ceramist, at the same time, he has to uh, work on his skills, knowledge, and attain some uh, laboratory skills that help him uh, during uh, the manufacturing of the CAT CAM restoration, all ceramic restoration especially. So, uh, I will be speaking today about my protocol that might help many dentists as well as technologists to uh, characterize and give some um, vitality and mimic nature for monolithic, especially glass ceramic restorations. One of the cases and the challenges, uh, or I, in my opinion, I consider it as the most difficult case is the restoration of a single central incisor, such as this case. This case is a male who uh, was uh, who had a trauma regarding upper right central incisor after endo treatment it was of, of course discolored and he is satisfied with the uh, appearance of his teeth he doesn't want to make uh, some uh, big dental work he only wants to restore uh, his uh, fractured tooth and to restore his natural looking and natural appearance another case is a female dentist uh, she's a colleague and um, she has a beautiful smile, proper alignment of anterior teeth, a proper uh, color and shape, uh, and only an upper left central incisor with a composite veneer that is usually discolored whenever it's replaced, it, it, it retains its discoloration once, once again. And uh, she wants a ceramic veneer uh, so that it, this would um, solve permanently the problem for her. These are considered very difficult cases for both dental technologists and for ceramists, prosthodontic ceramists especially, uh, to try to mimic and to replace such a tooth or to uh, place a veneer that would not be discoverable by uh, not professional eye but by regular people. My protocol that I suggested two years ago, it was published two years ago by Elsevier. Uh, it consists of three R's to recognize, record, and replicate some color shapes. Color is considered to be um, an, an, an interaction between light and the different components of the tooth regarding enamel and dentine. Okay, so uh, color is not the same from cervical to incisor of the central tooth. Okay. We have a basic shape that we regularly take uh, using uh, regular or common commercially available shape guides or even digital systems. But we have some other color shapes that we have to take in consideration while mimicking natural looking central incisor. The first one is the incisal halo. The incisal halo, it is a, a halo of white or vanilla creamy uh, color that extends from contact to contact. It demarks the translucent zone beneath it, and it is an optical illusion resulting from the inclination of the incisal edge in a lingual direction. Thus the light, instead of trans being transmitted through the prisms and the enamel rods in the incisal edge, it refracts from the boundaries of the enamel rods. Thus it appears opaque. Its existence or not should be recognized and recorded during a mimicking and replication of colors on an upper central incisor. The second color shape is the translucent zone. Okay, the translucent zone it lies just cervical to the incisal halo, and it consists of a translucent enamel extending from contact to contact and have a gray, blue, or grayish blue shade or color shape. This also should be recognized and recorded. The third color shape is the, is the mammalons. Mammalons are considered the first appearance of dentine in enamel. The other parts of the enamel of the incisal edge are unsupported with dentine. Mammalons are, uh, appear as either three or minimally a one, or may, mammalons may not appear during uh, visualization of an upper central, but if they exist, they exist in several colors, either as the basic shade of the tooth or as an orange, yellow, or salmon 
color, the, each mammalian should, may have a, a different color, or each mammalian may be con consisting of more than one color. It may be tipped with a white tip or not. Uh, whatever uh, you can see, it has to be recorded during uh, the recognition of the color shapes of the central you are going to mimic. The interproximal enamel, it's a similar uh, shape as that as the translucent zone. The, it extends interproximally. Actually, it appears uh, during uh, oblique visualization of the central incisor, not in the uh, in a 90 degree uh, face to face with the central. It is an oblique direction, may appear more uh, translucent parts that exist on the both sides of the central. Also, it uh, has the same as that of the translucent zone, same sh color shape, either gray or blue. This is the part where an opalescent effect may appear more than. Uh, the grayish translucent appearance of the translucent zone. The body of the tooth, this is what we are usually uh, um, familiar with. This is the part where uh, every dentist take the shade and uh, the, the lab receives the main shade of the tooth, whether uh, A, B, or C, D uh, shades. Uh, so I think we are all familiar with that part of the tooth. Uh, this consists of the main bulk of the dentine covered with the main bulk of enamel. So uh, actually, this is uh, a regular or a commonly uh, known color shape. The neck uh, of the tooth, this is the part where there is a minimal effect of enamel and there is an exaggerated effect or color appearance of dentine. Okay, this is the part just behind the height of contour of the central incisor. Uh, this six color shapes, which are the incisal halo, translucent zone, the mammalons, the interproximal enamel, the body of the tooth and the neck, are considered the main color shapes that we are going to mimic. Other color shapes may exist or not, such as the pericaimata, such as cracks, uh, for example, the hypoplastic uh, white patches. Uh, they also may exist. There are other many color shapes that are present in nature, but mainly these six color shapes that we have to recognize uh, each time we are going to mimic an upper central, okay? Uh, how we are going to record them? We have two ways to record these color shapes. First, we have to select the basic shade, whether A, B, C, or D, which is a usual, uh, uh, sorry, a common and a regular uh, procedure that we do uh, every day with our patients, okay? Selecting the basic shade is using classic shade guides, up till now, as far as I know, uh, all ceramic restorations, whether milled or pressed, are uh, produced and uh, present in the market in the classic shade guides, not in the 3D master shade guides. So uh, take in consideration while taking shade for a tooth that it will be pressed or milled using classic shade guides. So uh, to uh, avoid the mismatch during conversion from classic to 3D master, uh, I think and I suggest that you always take for all ceramic the classic shade guide, okay? So uh, we will take the base, basic shade, okay? But we have to remember that the basic shade is only the background. It's, it's like the canava. It's like a portrait that are, we are going to draw. So it actually consists of 5 to 10% of the uh, final outcome that uh, the usual, uh, uh, the eye will, will see. Uh, many dentists, when they take the just the basic shade and send it to the lab or do the restoration by themselves, they find that the restoration coming back to them uh, doesn't appear uh, more natural than uh, as they expected, and uh, they don't know what is the problem. The problem is that they didn't send uh, enough pictures, they didn't send enough information to the technologist just to understand what, if there is color shapes or not, the extension, their uh, colors, and uh, uh, how are they are present on the surface of the tooth. So this is the main difference between a natural looking restoration and uh, just uh, a restoration with a basic shade and properly glazed, finished, and have a proper size and form. How will you send it to the, to, the, to the lab or how are you going to record it if you are going to do such a restoration with a CAT CAM restoration or later on in your dental office? If you are going to do this, you have to draw a color map. A color map, as you can see, is just an outline, a draft for the tooth you are going to mimic. And we have to take in consideration that the outline should be 
nearly the same as that you are going to uh, mimic because you are going to draw on it the extensions of the color shapes. It doesn't make sense that you have a triangular upper central and you draw an oval or a rounded one, and then you want to draw the extensions properly from one side to the other. So as far as, uh, as, as you can, just draw it to a great extent similar in outline as that you are going to mimic. Uh, the six color shapes will be placed on it, as you can see. It, in every situation and in each case, there is no rule that the six, will, six color shapes will exist. Just you will make a checklist if they exist or not. If you see they exist, you draw their extension, thickness, and what you can see with your own eye as a color, white, yellow, orange, the regular colors you can know. Later on, when you are more uh, skillful and you have only one system that you are uh, practicing with, you can see uh, the colors uh, with the names of, the, of your system, of your uh, shading or staining system. Uh, but uh, at first, as a, just as a starter, you may just draw uh, and say, I, I see a white color, a blue color, a light gray color. Then uh, as a second step, you will convert these into the colors and the names or the, even the numbers of the system you are using. Then for the step of replication, uh, I think four or five years ago, they started, many companies started to uh, produce uh, ceramic shades, 3D luster pastes. Uh, these are different from the regular stains as the, these are not uh, produced as metal oxides that needs uh, sintering to produce the color. They are low fusing ceramics. Uh, so actually when you are applying them on the surface, you see the final colors that are uh, going to be produced. On the contrary, in stains, it needs to be placed inside the furnace, then oxidation occurs, and then when it comes outside of the furnace, you see the final results of the color. So this is an actual benefit that using these colors, uh, you can uh, define them more, you can reduce the intensity of them just before they are placed in the furnace. Uh, for myself, I use many systems, but this is one of the uh, most common that I use is the IQ in, uh, initial luster paste, the new formula from GC. Uh, I think it, is, it contains many colors. Of course, you don't have all the colors that you are going to use, but the main basic colors. And then you can mix one uh, color with another to produce this the, the, or need, uh, mimic the color that you see on the natural tooth. Uh, Remford has provided us with an excellent, in my opinion, an excellent uh, set called GeoExpert Wax Set. By, it is uh, by August Bruguera. Okay. Uh, this wax set, uh, I think it is an excellent set to, uh, to understand how uh, the tooth, uh, dentine and enamel, have different proportions with each other. Also to understand how you can uh, mimic this with porcelain. For a starter, uh, uh, you can use this uh, kit to train yourself on different layering using dentine and enamel without uh, using uh, porcelain to sharpen your skills or to be more knowledgeable about this composition. It consists of uh, a gray wax for sculpturing and may be used as gray effect in the incisal uh, part, dentine. Uh, wax, uh, two types of enamel wax. One is called enamel, which is more opaque, and one is translucent. Uh, small pellets of wax, orange, reddish, I think, reddish brown, white, and blue. These are used as uh, effects. Uh, so, as you can see, it's more or less uh, it's similar to the porcelain we use. Uh, but instead of learning through using porcelain, which is more expensive, uh, time consuming, and you are using uh, many cycles and waiting for the cycle to uh, complete, to take the next step or to correct what you are doing. I think this uh, uh, set will help you uh, to sharpen your skills in a very short time than you, if you are going to learn it on, on 
and using porcelain furnace and layering the regular layering technique. Uh, waxing up monolithically and statically using this kit, as you can see, we can use dentin effects, even do the mammalons cut back, place enamel, and then you can reach the final result, uh, which is very much similar to natural teeth color and uh, to porcelain ceramic color. How do I use this uh, for in my programs and courses that I uh, teach? How do I use this for myself as an exercise? I place, and after I do a wax, uh, waxing up using this kit, uh, I place it in an uh, alveolar model and I use the other central. Uh, you can use uh, another abutment with a crown, PFM, or ceramic. I use a refractory dye, okay, uh, for a veneer, laminate veneer. And uh, we will start to just make a veneer with the basic shade, okay? Uh, all the coming uh, pictures are taken with the easy view uh, 3D digital microscope. I think it's, it's very beneficial. It has added to my uh, skills and to my uh, business in demonstrations and recording and everything. Uh, the last uh, couple of years, it is, it's, uh, it's, it's top-notch uh, technology. I think it's, uh, thank you, Renfer, for such a, a microscope. Uh, all the pictures are taken with it, so uh, even it may, might replace a digital camera to a great extent, not uh, the macro uh, lens uh, pictures, but uh, to a great extent, you would, you would be uh, happy if you use it to record your, your cases. Uh, back to the exercise, I was just building up with GC, dentine, and enamel to replicate the basic shade, size and form. As you can see, the right side central is that done by wax. The other one will is the felspatic veneer with the uh, felspatic porcelain, just the basic shade replicating the sorry replicating the basic shade only as you can see in these four pictures uh, it gives you about 80 percent of the final result but still there is something missing still there is something uh, not natural in the felspathic veneer okay uh, this is what you uh, feel every time you send for your lab or even if you are you're using cat cam or heat pressed technology in your dental office, this is the same feeling that you feel that there is something miss missing. There is something, there is still step that makes our restoration more natural. Back to our title, the triple R protocol will help you that you have to recognize color shapes, record them, and then you will start to replicate them, okay? In our exercise, you will just place the color shapes using the stains, whatever the kit you are using, okay? Uh, I use GC initial, so here it's uh, the orange to do the cervical neck, and the cervical part is uh, here is using the incisio, which is uh, a pink uh, paste. Okay, uh, the body also I I think I placed here orange. Then for the translucent uh, area, I place I, I prefer uh, to place not gray only. I mix gray with blue 50 to 50 percent to give a grayish bluish effect. Okay, you may place some bluish for opalescence on the interproximal enamel, and then finally you place the incisal halo according to the extension, the color, either white or vanilla. As a result, you will see that the feldspathic veneer is quite a, or a little bit similar to, to that of wax, regardless of the material, the substrate we can mimic uh, the appearance using color shapes, okay? So our final result will be the same whenever restorations or whenever the material we are using. Uh, as a simple trick to just to make sure that everything is going okay, for uh, porcelain, you can place the liquid stain. It will give you the same appearance as uh, the glaze. And for uh, the wax, uh, especially the geo-expert wax, you can place uh, a separating medium uh, by Renfitz, a picocep. I use it just gives the same effect as glaze on porcelain for the, for the wax. So you can see uh, the mammalons I've placed, I think, uh, as I remember here, some white effects on the mammalons. And 
it is a little bit 90 to 95 percent similar okay some clinical applications and cases for the triple r protocol back to case number one the female dentist with the beautiful smile proper alignment proper shade and um, lousy and bad composite veneer discolored composite veneer okay we'll start to apply our protocol we will have to recognize first as a simple trick uh, we, we were always told that uh, uh, taking a shade should be taken without the, the teeth uh, being dry because this decreases the, the value of the teeth this is absolutely correct so take the base, basic shape first then start to isolate the upper anterior teeth and just leave them uh, for 30 uh, 30 seconds one minute and color shapes with dryness color shapes will start to appear uh, for myself i have a digital camera beside me one of the assistants take the uh, picture and we just increase the contrast and you can see the color shapes uh, everywhere okay uh, so I, here is the incisal halo, the translucent zone, mammalons, and uh, as a simple trick to just to see if there is mammalons or not, trace the translucent zone in between the grooves of the mammalons, and you will see the mammalons. Just don't uh, try to see the mammalons alone. Just trace the extensions and the edges of the translucent zone. You will find the mammalons. Okay. Such a tooth has a basic shape, but the, mostly it is it, it is trying to appear from, from the color shapes. Uh, basic shade is nearly below these uh, horizontal perichymata white lines, okay? Uh, interproximal enamel is just a very thin layer, and of course the neck is very well defined here. So to record them, this is the incisal uh, halo, okay? This is the translucent zone. Mammalons are here, having the same shade as the basic shade, not uh, different from them. Okay, and this is the interproximal enamel, body of the teeth, and the neck. At this situation, you have to draw. At this step, sorry, you have to draw the color map. Okay, so this is is the draft of your color map. Uh, either to draw on them what you can see, and you just you place here the in the body shape uh, B1. A, C, A, A2, whatever the basic shade is, and you will start to say here that I see uh, an A2 shade, I see here a creamy shade, um, uh, whatever uh, you want to uh, define it with, then it will be translated into the names or the numbers of the system you are using. For example, if we are using here, it, I see a copper hue, it will be replicated by a diluted LA. Uh, paste in, in GC initial uh, kit, which is a diluted L is for luster paste and A is a body shade A, okay? Uh, it, this, these names will differ from one system to other, uh, but uh, mainly I would recommend that you take, at first as starting up with, with such a technique, you, you just take, uh, record the, the colors with your own uh, names and with your colors and then you try to replicate them with the with the names of the system we are all familiar with with such uh, steps you prepare the veneer you finish it and then you take the basic shade and of course the basic shade here if we're taking b1 uh, this position is improper for taking the shape and um, why because uh, the shade tab and the tooth are at different levels, so you see much more light reflection from the shade tab, so it appears lighter in color. But uh, this is a B1 shade, and this is what we are you are going to receive if you didn't uh, record the color shapes. This is what you are going the same shape as you are going to receive from the lab if you didn't uh, record the color shapes and send it to him, or if you didn't record them and replicate them by yourself. Okay. Temporization of the case and dismissing the patient. Then for myself, I use heat press ceramics. I have my own lab in my dental office, okay? And uh, now in my training center, it's for dental uh, technologies, uh, fixed prosthetic technology training. So the equipment is already there. 
I do my ceramics by myself. So from A to Z, I pour the impression, trim it. I use a die master set to place the die spacer and uh, separating medium. Okay, I place at any time I'm doing a waxing up for any restoration veneer or a crown, I always place a soft wax layer at the start just to make sure that proper application uh, uh, adaptation and proper flow uh, it prevents the wax from being uh, cracking or uh, fracturing during removal from the dye so i use the geodip and then geoclassic wax for uh, the body and sculpturing and uh, the margination of the case okay investing and pressing then divesting the case and checking on the cast okay uh, here to, to try in inside the oral patient's mouth. Um, I want to say something about this uh, picture. Uh, I highly recommend that if you are going to uh, mimic the color shapes, you have to make sure that the proper size, outline form, and surface texture are properly mimicked and imitated because the surface is going to be uh, the, uh, exposed to light and then the light will be reflected to your eye to see uh, the tooth. If you mimic the color shapes exactly the same and you don't have the proper surface texture or the proper size and form, uh, it will not appear the same, okay? And vice versa, if you didn't mimic the color shapes and you have an, an, an excellent size and form and surface texture, it will still not look the same. So you have to go through size, form, surface texture, and color shapes, all they have to be mimicked uh, and record, first recorded, then you have to be replicated exactly as the uh, other central incisor. With replication, uh, this protocol is uh, also useful for CAD CAM users, as I said, because there is no laboratory support. So once you have milled or heat pressed the restoration in your office, you try it inside the patient's mouth and isolate the anterior teeth. Uh, then you start the same steps as done in the lab uh, by the technologists. You can do it yourself. And instead of, instead of recording and taking pictures, you may be able to mimic it from the real tooth because it's already the same. So you can do the steps from placing the last, uh, sorry, the liquid, uh, staining liquid on the restoration and start staining and shading the tooth intraorally. Uh, at that point, luster paste will be very beneficial because, uh, as I said before, the the colors appear the same as that of the, what uh, what you are going to receive when they come out of the furnace, not as, as the regular stains. And uh, you have the option of increasing and decreasing according to what you can see uh, in the adjacent teeth. So this is the perfect equation, having uh, the real colors and the real tooth all together in one place in front of you. And just as a simple trick, place a liquid stain on the veneer or the restoration and as well as on the natural teeth to avoid uh, their dryness and decrease in value. So they keep wet and uh, lustery uh, during uh, the staining of the restoration. Okay, what we did on, in the lab, it's the same in the oral cavity. You can place the shades and stains to replicate the recorded color shapes or here in this situation, the adjacent tooth and to finalize, this is the final outcome before it, uh, it is being placed in, uh, in the furnace. This is not uh, uh, after it comes out of the furnace. So uh, actually, luster pastes will give you this excellent uh, opportunity to uh, make sure that everything will be okay. And when you place it in the furnace and get it outside, uh, and get it outside back, it's, uh, it's the same, uh, having the same colors. Uh, it won't increase in value, increase in coma, increase in, and uh, it, it will be the same, okay? You will have the same uh, effects, everything uh, before and after sintering in the furnace. This is when we'll increasing coma, um, maybe here I increase the, the neck a little bit, okay? Some orange, it exists, but I don't uh, think that is with this intensity, but at the end, they don't have to be 100%, but at least 90 to 95 percent this will give uh, the eye uh, 
a normal and naturally looking two central incisors, okay? Uh, I was lucky enough because the smile line here, it doesn't appear, uh, doesn't reveal the, the neck. So I actually got with cementation of the case. Uh, this is after two weeks from uh, delivering the veneer, okay? I think, in my opinion, it's much, much better than the discolored composite restoration. Another case is another central incisor going with the regular steps, removal of the carriers, try in, and then mimicking the two central incisors. Okay, and back to the discolored central incisor. This was a very difficult case, and I'm sorry for the pictures, but um, they are mobile pictures, and I think about 85 to 90% mimicking of the central, other central incisor, okay. Uh, last but not least, this is a cantilever lateral on canine, and uh, in my opinion, about 85 to 90 percent at least mimicking the case. So, I think an intraoral characterization using the triple R protocol luster pastes it's, it will be a value for you both technologists and dentists. Um, don't uh, forget the three R's, triple R, okay. And for uh, anyone who wants more details, uh, steps, cases, it's already published two years ago, uh, 2018. Uh, it's uh, present on Science Direct. If anybody wants to uh, contact me, uh, please do, and I might send it for you because uh, if you don't find it, I'm sorry, because if, if, if you search the article and didn't find it, I, I will be glad to, to send it to you. Um, before I finish, I would like to invite everybody to visit Egypt. And of course, after the COVID uh, issue would uh, vanish, hopefully, by the end of this year, uh, everything will be back to normal. And uh, I hope uh, that we see you in Egypt and especially uh, Manfred. Thank you very much, Manfred, for this uh, meticulous organization and uh, for uh, this, uh, uh, what I say, a great opportunity to be uh, with you here while, uh, while with, we're, we're, um, we're passing through this COVID problem. Uh, thank you, Renfrew family, uh, and I hope you all enjoyed your uh, evening with me. And back to you, Manfred. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Amre, for this very excellent and very interesting presentation. And we saw again that how it's important to to teach and train your own skills uh, to to get uh, really excellent results and understand uh, all, everybody what, what, what you have to do. Very excellent to show both ways, and especially from a dentist that you are also an excellent technician. I saw it's also here at the, at the course here. <laughs> it's <laughs> not normal, yeah, it's, it's very special, but I, I like that because you are also a dentist, you understand also what our dental technicians are doing and what are the challenges and everything. Thank you again very much. Uh, hopefully all participants like this very nice presentation. And uh, please follow also our um, uh, Renford Dental homepage. Uh, we will offer also in future uh, other uh, webinars, presentations with, with, with other uh, very interesting people and you are all welcome. So thank you again and thank goodbye to, to, to Egypt, to Cairo. And we see we see us soon, hopefully. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.